Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to fit the Catalyst Navy issue. This is a guide uh, for uh, assembling one uh, from scratch, and not entirely from scratch because we already have the ship. Uh, big shout out to Zeront for being able to provide us with the ship. Um, he spent a lot of time cooking this baby in the uh, ovens. So the Catalyst Navy issue is a formidable weapon. Uh, it's uh, one of the top class destroyers. It's an advanced destroyer. It's uh, based off the Catalyst uh, hull. And it has quite some interesting bonuses. It used to be a monster in the betas, but it was, I'll be blunt about it, it was quite nerfed. Before we get into the episode, please remember to throw in a like and a subscribe if you like what we're doing here on the channel. And remember, uh, if you wish to support me and help keep this channel alive, there's a YouTube channel membership. You can uh, help with some donations, uh, donations as small as two dollars. Link in the description. So back on track, back to our business here. The Catalyst Navy issue, as I mentioned, is a formidable opponent even after the nerf. Uh, although I have poor skills, it has uh, decent DPS and decent tank and you can toy quite around with the fittings. So let's take a look at the actual ship description. Catalyst Navy issue is a destroy, it's tech level 5, has a roll bonus of 25% small railgun optimal range. Um, if you add the um, uh, additional damage, you'll get to uh, some interesting bonuses. Let's see, small railgun operation bonus spell level, get an additional 5% small railgun damage, 7.5 small railgun tracking speed and accuracy fa uh, fall off. And per destroy command uh, level, you get 5% armor, 5% scan resolution and 5% sensor strength. Uh, during the betas, this was a brawler. Uh, now, it has been redesigned towards um, mid to long range engagements but it's still quite as good as a brawler thanks to uh, the decent tank that it has. Let's take a look at the basic info. We learned about this button, uh, we get into the attributes fittings and uh, we can see that it's an armor tank vessel. If you remember when we uh, covered the Galente ship tree, uh, the Galente prefer armor tanking. We've got uh, 1,367 armor hit points and just 1,133 shield hit points. Uh, the resistance is on the armor, pretty standard for an armor tank. 50% uh, uh, EM uh, resistances, 35, 36 uh, thermal and kinetic and just 10% on the explosives so it has an explosive hole that you need to plug because people will going uh, will be uh, will be exploiting that uh, no doubt about it the appearance is quite good and, and quite um, awesome it has this awesome uh, default skin uh, which is like a military camouflage because it's a navy issue it's like the state um, state version the Galente State Federation Navy uh, issue of this vessel. So let's get into our business and uh, show you guys a couple of fits that I have prepared for you. Now, before we uh, investigate this further, let's take a look at how the actual Catalyst Navy issue looked in the betas. So the Catalyst Navy issue used to have five high slot, one slot uh, uh, one more slot actually over all the other Navy destroyers uh, and with decent actually decent outstanding skills you could have done this 623 DPS just from the guns close range blasters it had it used to have two mid slots and four low slots and you could have done some amazing things uh, by feeding resistance a rep or double resistance or um, a macro warp drive because it used to be a brawler it had um, interesting bonuses uh, in that area and also a prop mod either afterburner or micro warp drive and of course a damage mod uh, being the magnetic field stabilizer and you could have done oh, you could have melted almost anything just get into close range and melt the face off of your opponent. Uh, as in tank, 
the tank was very good. Uh, defense and the armor, um, effective hit, hit points were around six to seven thousand with these um, with this preset actually, uh, and resistances were quite good, around fifty percent all resistances with capacitor stable uh, and with the de decent speed. The ship itself has suffered some nerfs. As you can see, one of the low slots has mo has been moved to uh, uh, a med mid slot, and um, the fact that the low slot actually disappeared is a bit uh, cumbersome because you can't pull off tank prop um, prop as in propulsion, if you guys didn't know, um, and damage mod. So you have to be picky and you have to. Um, identify exactly what you need to do and you have to fit it exactly for that specific purpose because there's no more room uh, to do um, weird stuff uh, like be amazing at everything so you need to have this focused as you can see right now we are in the 140 dps which is an amazing um, which is an amazing drop from the uh, 600 dps um, we have the 4 Mark V small snub nose, which is the blaster version, the close range. We've got uh, uh, 35 DPS on each gun and it deals thermal and kinetic damage with a um, decent range of 1.88 kilometers. Now, the range is increased as per the roll bonus, but these are close range weapons so it's not something that uh, you'd want to shoot uh, from far away the accuracy fall off is poor because uh, the galente guns are not minmata guns uh, they don't excel at accuracy fall off but they do compensate in damage uh, you can't get this damage on uh, on cannons actually you can but not that good so the galente weapons have a bit more damage uh, in uh, just to compensate on the med slots I just fit a, a small energy neutralizer it's in mark 3 you can go with the mark 5 I just uh, grab whatever I had uh, in my inventory and of course this one is very needed the mark 5 stasis web fire uh, the Galente um, the Galente guns especially the snub nose uh, the blasters I can't get around these new names it's pretty weird um, so you do need a web because you want to keep stuff in place uh, the tracking is a bit poor so in order to deal maximum damage you, know, you, need, you need to be inside the optimal range and you need to keep your target in one spot again the extra slot uh, can be used for either another web or uh, you can go with a warp disruptor, but that is pretty expensive, so you need to like farm. But I would recommend going out with, uh, with warp disruptors unless you're living in Nullsec and you have like uh, if you're flying in gang fleet. Uh, going all solo um, with warp disruptors is is pretty bad. I mean, you're bound to lose it at one point, and you're just gonna read it. Nine million. This is like an an entire ship, so. <laughs> Be mindful of that. The low slots. I just fit a small afterburner. Uh, why small afterburner? And why not micro warp drive? Well, the micro warp drive has received a, a, a nerf actually as well. Uh, it's not actually a direct nerf. It's an indirect nerf. The warp disruptor affects, uh, as opposed to the better, the warp disruptor cuts down the micro warp drive. Now. We will talk about this probably in a future video in which I discuss this issue with the warp disruptors, warp scramblers and the micro warp drive and why this is not so good of a design and why it should be reworked and probably have the warp scramblers introduced because you guessed it, the, the micro warp drives get cut down, I think we already mentioned, they get cut down by the uh, warp disruptors from 24 kilometers. That's completely destroying your propulsion mods and you have no way to move around and if you're using uh, close range weapons you're at a very big disadvantage so I'd rather go with afterburners and uh, and stasis webs to, to try to grapple on the enemy get as close as possible and start applying damage and then run away 
Uh, I have a damage mod. You can, if you if you fit uh, rigs, damage rigs, you can uh, get rid of the damage mod and add the reactive armor hardener. We have it here. It provides some more increase in the uh, armor resistances. And I usually like to go with the small armor repair. Now, in 1v1 battles, uh, you can go with the armor uh, with the armor plate. It uh, gives you uh, a, a flat passive um, amount of armor. Plus, when you activate it, you get just like the shield extender, you get an additional uh, bonus um, in armor hit points. Now, the problem with that is uh, it goes away, and if you already have a hole in your armor hit points, that hole is not covered by the armor points given bonus. When the bonus goes away, when the activation, which lasts I think 20 seconds, uh, the extra sh uh, extra shield or extra armor that was given to you is actually in an extension, so it goes away and you are still left with the armor hole, the amount of armor that you lost. Uh, it, it, it's not the boosting and gaining that extra HP is not going to uh, do to go into the um, to your armor uh, directly. So you're still gonna be left with uh, with armor missing. So that those kind of items are usually good versus um, actually just in one v one situations. If you're in like a one versus multiple, you're kind of fucked using that. Uh, item, uh, unless you have like 90% resistances all the way, which is, at least on this ship, is not doable, I think. Not at this stage of the game, maybe with more decent skills and more stuff. So, I really like to fit because I usually get myself involved in one versus multiple, and I like to cut, kite my uh, opponents and then cherry pick the ones that I want to take down. Remember, we've covered this in solo PvP or small gang PvP. Um, pick your fights correctly. So you can toy around, try to bait them out of the group, and then just slice one open, uh, and then either warp out, do some tactics, try to see if there's like some other uh, members of the group that are gonna give chase to you and uh, wipe them out as well. Don't get involved with multiple enemies at once because you're gonna fail. It's the, the tank is good, but um, it's not that good when you have like some big DPS incoming. You're just gonna get blown out of the sky. Pick your fights correctly. Uh, this ship also does uh, well in PVE situations. Uh, before we get into that, let's look at the rigs. Um, I usually fit an anti-explosive pump, as you can see, we have the defense here uh, already buffed up on the explosive. You can add an additional um, ex uh, anti-explosive pump uh, just to compensate, and you can uh, you can leave the fit as is uh, without any resistances on the low slots. Otherwise, uh, you can fit the, uh, the rig slots with damage rigs and then you can get the magnetic field stabilizer out and put a resistance module inside. So uh, there's way to, to tour around with it and you should be fine. So this is the close range fit. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the extra low slot, uh, the extra mid slot, you can either go with a warp disruptor or a stasis web, uh, but I wouldn't recommend the warp disruptor period. Um, so this is pretty much the damage on close fit. Um, it's not that good. Uh, we also have uh, a fit available so we can uh, swap it out and show you guys um, the, the differences in range and in DPS. We have the um, Mark V small rifle railgun which is actually the uh, the railgun, the long range version of the Galente uh, weapons. So let's Let's fit these right here. One, two, three, and four. You'll notice a a decrease in the DPS output. Okay, I think we have them all. Uh, this one is small, 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 and small. Okay. Now the DPS has gone down considerably from 140 to 100 DPS top, but this is this is good. This is still good. You can take down frigates, uh, but 
you can actually use this for PvE, which is uh, the one that I would recommend. Um, again, you can toy around with the low slots and with the rigs, either go with some damage in the rig slots and have uh, resistances on the lows, or use damage mods on the low and use resistances on rigs. It's your call. Uh, you can also check the market, see how you can price it correctly, so you can do it like budget ish or I don't know you you basically need to um, to explore the area a bit but this is the actual DPS with long range uh, guns now long range is not actually raw long range it's more like a mid to long range as I mentioned before we've got only 25 DPS on the gun and the optimal range is around 11 kilometers with my skills uh, we'll quickly take a look at the skills in a moment uh, just to show you guys exactly what needs to be trained but besides that uh, this is pretty much it on how you can fit your ship uh, again you can also have the web here and you can keep something at range at nine kilometers orbit it and um, pound it with your rail guns if it's something close range fit like auto cannons or um, a different ship using uh, pulse lasers or even a Galente ship using uh, blasters, uh, snub-nosed railguns, uh, then you can basically avoid any damage at all. This is pretty much it on how the fits work. Um, let's take a look at the actual skills. We have the button here for the recommended skills and we get the um, Destroy command bone, uh, destroy command recommended and advanced and expert destroy command. Each one of these give you uh, bonuses to velocity and inertia modifier. Now with the advanced, sorry, clicked on the wrong side of the screen. With the advanced uh, and the expert, the bonuses are still the same. Uh, things change when you go into defense upgrade. So you get destroy shield, destroy armor, destroy structure, and with the uh, advanced and expert with the advanced as uh, in the stabber case when we reviewed the um, the defensive uh, skills you get percentages so it's really really good if you manage to get uh, to get your your stuff up especially if you're in a, in a gang fleet you could definitely use the armor plate because that's that's actually recommended because in a small fleet you can actually have one guy flying logistics and uh, he can provide um, remote repping and you basically don't need your own repper you can um, you can count on your mate to heal you up and it's more recommended to have a plate in that case uh, moving downwards in the um, engineering the engineering gives you capacitor uh, power grid and uh, what capacitor need plus the advanced and expert giving you percentages of those and target management and uh, it basically gives you extra targets to to be able to take a lock on now this panel here does not talk about weapons uh, i've submitted a support feedback uh, ticket relevant skills should involve weapons skills as well uh, they're missing from here so moving on to uh, the skills uh, panel getting into the weapons technology and going over to the railguns, you'll see that uh, the best skills in order to master DPS on the um, uh, Catalyst Navy, actually on every Galenta ship that uses railguns, you have the uh, small railgun operation for small turrets that can be fitted on frigates and destroyers, you get small railgun damage and tracking speed, the advanced railgun operation gives you railgun damage tracking speed and magnetic field stabilizer activation time, meaning it lasts longer. The, uh, the damage mods give you a passive damage boost, but when activating it, you get uh, a bigger, much bigger boost, but it only lasts for 20 seconds. Uh, so keep that in mind, having this skill basically adds a couple of more seconds that we, you can squeeze more juice and get some more damage applied. Again with the expert railgun operation with the same situation and you also need a small railgun upgrade which will give you an additional damage bonus and accuracy falloff so you can increase the, uh, the crappy accuracy falloff on the Galente weapons. 
Uh, this advanced small railgun upgrade also gives you, um, alongside the damage and accuracy fall off, you get some optimal range and again magnetic field stabilizer activation time. And the expat, uh, pretty much the same bonuses as the advanced. This is pretty expensive. It's gonna, it's gonna take a long time before someone actually manages to, to get into expert on something, I think. Some people might have already gone into expert. I think the miners, the industry guys, they've already went into expert mode on some of the stuff they need to produce because they really want uh, some profit in order to keep the business running, eh? So that's pretty much on the skills and what you need to do with this baby. Let's uh, let's get over into um, into the fitting screen again. Let's fit our snub nosed and see how good it fares versus uh, some NPCs. Uh, let's fit these back up. Remember, we have just one kilometer, uh, actually almost to 1.88. So you actually need to to be right in front of your opponent, point blank range, in order to apply damage otherwise it's just gonna suck and uh, you'll probably notice it immediately so back to our 140 dps let's get out of this uh, out of the station and let's warp to uh, an anomaly there was some some anomalies in the system uh so pentasmal anomaly yeah that does not help us let's just let's search for an anomaly quickly in um oh there it is we're going into 8.5 uh, high sec. Now the point five usually have uh, point Warp drive actually, active. Uh, level four anomalies. We're interested in level four or level uh, three, just to showcase you some damage. Of course, I don't have decent skills. I just have like level four in something and level three in in, uh, in small railgun upgrades. You'd want to take this to advance, and you'll actually be able to reach somewhere around 200 DPS, which is quite good, uh, because that DPS is com can be compared to a cruiser DPS. This is still a formidable weapon, even, it, even if it has been nerfed uh, considerably. Um, yeah, I can't even explain. Actually, the five guns... Uh, was something that I pointed out during the beta, so this could probably be my fault. <laughs> I noticed that all the other ships had like four weapons, and I submitted a ticket and I asked like, what's what's up with this one having, um, having five? And I think... <laughs> I think somebody actually uh, took that into consideration. So we're just we're gonna warp to zero. Let's group our weapons. We want these group. Warp drive active. One more thing that you need to uh, take into account is the fact that you should set up your orbit. Let's click on our ship right here. Come on, is it broken? Okay, that's it. Set orbit. Set orbit to uh, one kilometer. This is how you set your default orbit. You click on your ship and then you uh, click and hold on the set orbit and then that indicator arrives and you basically just uh, drag and drop to the selected range. So let's orbit this. Activate our prop mods. We can also activate our... We cap staples so we can run the uh, small armor repair to the infinite and beyond. Let's keep this pointed and let's start applying some decent damage. Ooh, almost one shot, almost one shot. Let's see how we fare against this one. Okay, we've webbed it. We're doing a bit crap here on the damage, but as soon as we get into our optimal range, uh, it still sucks, come on, mate. Oh, okay, 351, 400 DPS. Let's go and approach right here on the Catalyst right away. And try to get uh, some of that peak DPS. We need to be like really, really close. I started shooting around three kilometers. So it was probably uh, not a very good idea to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we are point blank range. Let's keep this webbed, so no more moving. And let's activate. There we go. Yeah, the shield has natural resistances. The armor, not so much. The kinetic, there we go, 371. That's the biggest uh, on a destroyer. So it's actually pretty good. The important thing is, let's not web. Sorry, let's deactivate guns. So let's start uh, orbiting. Just to show you guys the tracking. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the NPCs don't usually have afterburners and stuff, so uh, it's pretty standard to, to, to have them in place and just activate your, your modules and fire away. Uh, so that's pretty much it on what the ship can do. Um, I guess we'll be able to see if it actually keeps adding up uh, once you get into the um, to the higher grade skills, and uh, and if it's still a, a, a worthy um, worthy ship flying versus bigger things, because once as the game progresses, you'll notice that people just hop in, into bigger and bigger stuff. The important thing is to have a healthy environment, and uh, uh, the smaller ships still have a chance. Otherwise. The beauty of Eve goes away, which is asymmetrical combat. So it's going to be interesting to see if all these smaller ships, like uh, the frigates and the destroyers, and even the advanced versions of them, will still be able to be very good versus uh, bigger ships like uh, battle cruisers and stuff. In uh, in in numbers, you can do stuff, but I'm interested to see if you can get some outstanding DPS on uh, on a faction ship destroy size and still be able to take down your opponent which could be uh, two three tiers higher than you thank you guys for watching a very very big shout out to my channel supporters uh, th uh, see you guys next time cheers